For a closer look right now at the markets and the state of the retail investor, we want to bring in Joe Moglia, the former chairman and CEO of TD Ameritrade. He's now chair of athletics and executive advisor to the president at Coastal Carolina University. And uh, Joe, good morning. Good morning, Becky. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Joe. So we're getting through um, the slower days of August. And yep. you, you've got people who are saying, well, maybe buying on the pullbacks isn't such a great idea anymore. That's what Goldman Sachs says. I was looking at it this morning, even with the pullback, 3.4% for the month of August. You've still got the S&P at 44.33. So it's kind of like what pullbacks? Have we seen any serious pullbacks to this point? Well, I think you know. I think you can paint a pretty good good. Uh, you can have a good argument for why the market should do a little better. You can have a good argument for why the market should not do well, and you have got to be a lot more cautious. I think there are more reasons to be cautious. You know, we worry about China from a political and military perspective, but now they're having problems with their economy. I think they they, they cut rates uh, last night or overnight for a reason. Uh, if they have a problem with their economy and demand goes down in China, it's going to have an impact on our exports. It's going to have an impact on the multinationals like NVIDIA and Apple that have, have operations in China. You still got problems with uh, the market, the economy in, 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 uh, in Europe. Uh, you've got concerns with regard to uh, the while earnings have been better this year and the beating earnings, they're four and a half percent less than what they were a year ago. So that's not that good. And at the end of the day, we still have significant geopolitical issues and we are as divided as we ever have been as a country. And there's a question about our leadership. Those things add up to be more caution, I think, than, than aggressive. But you do like what you've been seeing in the retail trading activity reports from retail traders just recently this month or so. You know, there, there, there was a stat that I saw the other day that, that, I, that, that surprised me a little bit. Now, I've always believed that retail is a lightning indicator in terms of what goes on. They tend to follow the market. I still feel that. But prior to COVID, retail was 10 percent of the entire volume. Today, it's 24 percent, a quarter of the entire volume that, t that, that the trades on the exchanges are retail. And I think that happened because during COVID, of course, we were remote. Uh, you had uh, you, you had a, a kick with the uh, with the stimulus. Uh, you got free trading and you've got better, better products, better risk management tools, better client service and a quarter of the entire that that we've never seen that. Is, is that because there's so much more retail investing or is that also because some of the pros and the so-called smart money is, is sitting out on the sidelines right now? Well, I don't know if the smart money sitting on the sidelines affecting what retail is doing. Retail is still, you're still, there, there's still more, more money coming from equities into fixed income. Mm -hmm. I think more of the retail base is taking advantage of the five and a half percent in the front end of the curve. Uh, and I think the, the other side of it is, uh, the, the, if, if they own the S&P, and if they own the S&P, what well, we know 30 percent of the S&P is the, the mega cap tech. Mm -hmm. Well, that means all the mega cap tech is involved with AI. That means they also own AI. So they're involved with the markets. Uh, but I think, again, if we're, going to, if we're going to try to give them guidance. I think uh, discretion is, is, is the better part of valor here. Um, I, I, I'm only asking because earlier today we talked a little bit about how money on the sidelines is really building up again. Yep. Does that mean... Maybe the retail investors have a lot of money that's building up there, too, or you think that that's institutional money? No, I think retail has money on the sideline. That's why they're going from, that's the reason why they're going from equities into fixed income. And with that, they're aggressive in the front end of the curve with the 5.5% rate. So what there you, is money on the sideline. What do you think about the prospect of, you know, any credit activity versus any equity activity at this point? What, what do you think the scenario is between the two risk reward? Well, one of the things we've talked about, about in the, uh, over the span of the last couple of months, I think this is the first time in the last 15 years or so where uh, you get rewarded by being in the front end of the curve. Now, when you talk about asset allocation, you think about fixed income, you think about equity, you think about cash. But we've talked about, I think, the best thing for our, the best thing, I think, for the individual investor and I'm recommending this pretty strongly. I'm not saying, well, it depends on, is the barbell we've talked about before. 50% of your money in cash in the front end. You get a 5.5% guaranteed yield there without taking it in a virtually any risk. You about 50% uh, in equities or in whatever else you want them to be, the S&P 500, where you got exposure to mega cap tech and everything else. If the markets go up, you, you, you're making a lot of money on your equity. You're still getting five and a half percent. But if the markets crack, which is what we want to worry about, again. right? And you only have half of the money that's already invested there, so you're only going to lose that much. Plus, you get five and a half percent. And as you said, then you've got cash to kick in. I think I think that that's the safest and most profitable way for an individual investor to play that. 
I think that's the way we should be playing it. Joe, I was reading a story last night that just talked about Bitcoin, trading volume for Bitcoin being at its lowest level in more than four years. And that really surprised me because we've watched Bitcoin prices come back up. But the trading volume itself um, hasn't recovered from what we've seen since all the way back to 2018. No, I saw that also, Becky, and I was a little bit surprised at that as, as well. And I think what happened, if we got up to 45,000 or 50,000, wherever we were, and people were involved. 65. Where 55? 65. 65. We're up to 65. And the individual investor, remember, as the lag indicator, got involved with that. And they had a nice ride with that. Well, a lot of them didn't get out. And a lot of them really got hurt on the way down. Then they kicked out probably part of the way down. And whether or not they got back in fully or not, well, obviously, they've not gotten back in fully. And I think they've gotten hurt. But if Bitcoin continues to at least be stable and starts to do a little bit better, but stabilizing, I think, is the key for the individual investor, they'll come back in.